Hello, I am Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me uh, uh, Justin uh, Justin Roebuck <laughs> from the state of Michigan, um, and he is the Ottawa County Clerk Register, and um, we're uh, talking about a series of questions from the perspective of the voter. And um, next one is, uh, and uh, this is one that uh, actually uh, I think perhaps is more of a traditional uh, question uh, from past elections is uh, what should a voter do or what should be the voters expectations, <clears throat> excuse me, from observers or poll watchers, what should, um, what should they be able to, um, well, let me just leave it there. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's a good question and one that we get from um, a lot of voters as well. So in Michigan, there are two types of election observers. One is called a poll watcher and the other is called an election challenger. So a poll watcher is essentially anyone, anyone could be a, a, a poll watcher. Essentially that means that, you know, election day, uh, the precincts are public locations. Uh, our state law requires us to have some sort of accommodation for the public in a precinct. And this could be, you know, a limited space, but still allows uh, the public a, a a viewing area in the precinct where they would not be viewing any voter okay. participating in voting the ballot, but they could actually see what's going on in the precinct. Um, a poll watcher cannot touch anything related to the election. They can't, they don't necessarily have the ability to roam around the precinct at all. They can't talk to any voters. Okay. Election day challengers are a little bit different. They have a few more rights under the state's laws. Um, they have to be appointed by either a political party mm -hmm. or another. Um, uh, organization with an interest in the election process. So uh, there's a, a number of requirements they have to meet. They have to be a registered voter within the state. They have to be um, uh, exhibiting a credential that's uh, fairly specific. So the challenger has the right to actually view all of the election materials in the precinct. They can sit or stand behind election workers as they're checking voters in. Um, but again, they cannot touch any materials, they cannot handle any election materials, and they cannot interact with or talk to voters. So um, you should never ever be in a situation where you're intimidated by someone in the precinct who is there to observe. We want the process to be open to observation, right? This is a public process, this process belongs to all of us. Um, we're not hiding anything in the process. We want to make sure that both individuals and organizations have confidence in that. And so that's why our laws allow for that. Um, but when it crosses the line into the possibility of, you know, intimidating our voters or making people feel uncomfortable in the precincts going to exercise their right to vote, that is where our election officials within the precinct have the right to remove anyone who is a poll watcher or challenger who is disturbing the process or interfering with the process or holding it up in any way. Excellent. So um, you talked about the, the the ability for or how you become a, a election challenger, as you put it. Um, the the observers, what are the what are the uh, requirements um, or limitations on uh, becoming an observer? So if you're just a, a simple observer and you're you're there in the precinct to see what's happening, uh, maybe you know an example I give of this sometimes is maybe you're a part of a Boy Scout troop or Girl Scout troop or something, and you right. want to actually see what it looks like on election day. What what are people doing? Um, there are actually no requirements for that. Interesting. So uh, maybe I could accompany a friend uh, who you know is voting in the polls, and I don't you know want to vote myself or don't live in the same precinct, I could stand in the public viewing area or sit there and, and watch the process. Um, but I could not, um, you know, extend beyond the public viewing area. Another example of this is media. So media comes in and they want to observe what's happening or maybe get some B-roll footage of a precinct in action on election day. Mm -hmm. They have the ability to do that under the, under the laws, um, but they have to stay within that public viewing area. So it's, it's meant to be an area that gives people general observation, but also protects the voter's privacy. Obviously, you can't see into voting booths and so forth. Of course. So there's actually no requirement for somebody to just be a general observer in that way. Interesting. 
Um, perhaps another way that uh, a challenger and observer are different, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, can a, a, a challenger not only observe, observe, I'm kind of overusing this word, <laughs> but uh, the, the, um, the voting process in the polling place, but can they also um, uh, go behind the scenes in the election center where the, the, the ballots are being, I think you kind of alluded to this, but they also have the, the right to be able to observe the, the counting process and sorting and all the, 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 uh, the minutiae that goes into uh, 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 getting the point where the votes are cast. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a couple of different things there with, with for example, an absentee votes, for example. So they're, they're not uh, counted in precincts, mm -hmm. generally, only our very smallest jurisdictions um, would, would have the ability to do that. So the larger jurisdictions, uh, we have what we call absentee counting boards in Michigan. They're separately appointed election workers who are, you know, fall under the same rules and regulations, but they're, they're not processing individual voters coming in. They're actually processing those mailed in ballots. Okay. So, um, poll watchers and challengers in that context actually have the same, um, the same rights as in the precinct. So I could be a, just a watcher, or just a general observer with no official rights to challenge anything or no um, you know, rights to see a little bit more behind the scenes, I guess. You could still enter an absentee counting board and observe. Interesting. The challenge there is that in Michigan, we have sequestration laws. Okay. So from the opening of the polls at 7 a.m. until the closing of the polls at 8 p.m., at any time, if an observer or a challenger walks into that room where uh, ballots are being processed, they cannot leave until the close of polls. Oh. <laughs> so that presents an interesting challenge for transparency, honestly, right. because it's a little bit more hard, harder to recruit someone to observe if they know they're um, going to be locked in a room uh, without use of their cell phone for you know a period of 14 hours. So... Um, that's actually something that we would love to, our, our association of election officials and county clerks here in Michigan would love to see changed and moved um, to a process that's similar to a jury sequestration, right? Where mm -hmm. juries can go home and sleep at the end of the night. Obviously it's a felony to disclose um, information that's obtained during the course of your service. Um, but, but that kind of sequestration, I, unfortunately is probably more prohibitive uh, of the transparency process than it, sure. than it does allow for people to actually see what's happening. Is that due to the concern that they would uh, see, witness somebody's secret ballot and then would be able to disclose that? Yes. Yeah, so the, the law's been on the books for almost 100 years, and it really dates back to the time where obviously absentee ballots were, you know, there were fewer absentee ballots, but but the absentee ballots were actually counted differently. They were physically counted by the workers there. They were tallied. Right. And so you're, you're literally looking at a time where the ballots are um, you know, opened up and one, one worker is reading the votes to another and they're, they're using hash marks to mark uh, the tallies. That does not happen anymore. So in that kind of a situation, you could see where somebody is in a room and they're hearing and seeing the actual votes. Um, that's not how the process works anymore in the modern era. Mm -hmm. You know, we have um, a, a system where the ballots are processed in such a way that the, the worker who opens the ballot that has my name on the outside envelope is not the same worker who's going to unfold that ballot, actually view a voted ballot for a few seconds before it's inserted into a tabulator. And of course, that sure. tabulator is never producing results until the end of the night when we tell it to. Right. Well, it's it's more of an assembly line, if you will, because it's yeah. uh, you know a lot of paper to be to be uh, sorted and and shuffled and counted. Exactly. So yeah, we we've got some work to do there on just kind of updating our statutes to provide a better, more transparent process in you know how people can challenge and and observe in the uh, absentee counting boards. Well, that's a very interesting variation, uh, unique, to, well, I'm not sure, but uh, unique, my understanding so far to Michigan. Um, well, thank you very much for that, Justin. That was uh, very informative. This has been Lincoln Shorts. Yeah.